Okay, well, good morning to uh, Ron Howenstein. I'm making this recording for a, a quick forthright publication today. And uh, it was initiated because you were talking last week about an upcoming event on May 3rd at the Northeast Community Center in Hilliard. And the title is Working Together for a Safer Spokane um, Community Town Hall. That's May 3rd, 5 to 7 p.m. And it's about building safer neighborhoods, only we're not talking about buildings, we're talking about people. Uh, yeah, you want to yeah. give a little bit of background on how you build safer neighborhoods by building better people. Better people, that's a weird way to put it. By <laughs> drawing the best well, out of <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's no secret. We all know that families are the cornerstone of of civilization, of society, and, and it uh, it's, it's no secret what has happened to families in the last 50, 60 years. The rate of marriage in America is down 61% from its peak in 1970. Uh, out of wedlock births in 1960 were 5%. Now they're 40%. And among women aged 25 and under giving birth for the first time, it could be as high as 80%. So marriage as an institution in our culture is becoming less and less influential. That means more and more kids are being raised in single parent households. Um, this Here's a really disturbing statistic. America leads the world in the percent of single parent households mm -hmm. by a factor of three. Okay. Out of 130, yeah. out of 130 countries surveyed worldwide, the average percent of single parent households was seven, seven percent of households led by single parents. In America, it's 23%. Uh, an embar frankly, an embarrassing statistic, an embarrassing statistic. Our, our neighbor to the north, Canada, our closest neighbor geographically and culturally is 15 percent. Still, we're still 50 percent higher than them. So, um, yeah, we build we build stronger neighborhoods by restoring the family and, and putting this emotional uh, security blanket in our kids that, that's so important for them. Yeah, I think we uh, we probably we err in trying to be very supportive and kind of, of those who are finding themselves raising kids as a single parent, and and we know that yeah. father you know Father's Day was was started in uh, Spokane by uh, by a woman who appreciated her father who found himself being a single parent. Um, but I think maybe we what we lose sight of is when the community has statistics like that, such a high percentage, then that that basic context that that single parent has to work within has changed. And, and, yes. and they don't have that, uh, that support from other parents that have a little extra time perhaps to, to reach out. In Spokane, a local statistic that, that is very disturbing is that the rate of domestic violence is 50% higher than the state average. Spokane County leads the state in that category. Uh, child abuse and neglect is 35% higher in Spokane County than the state average. So uh, we, we have a huge uh, challenge. And I, so I went to one of these workshops uh, last week and there's three and uh, a very impressive uh, set of panelists, probably a dozen panelists, including the chief of police, the sheriff, a city councilwoman, uh, school district, probation, social workers, um, and nearly everyone said we meet, need more money for mental health dollars. There's, they just feel absolutely overwhelmed by the mental health challenges facing youth and families. But they did also acknowledge that, that the source, the roots and seeds of, of these problems that are, have blossomed and manifested so strongly is the breakdown of the family that, that you know, the, the school counselors were saying, we can counsel these kids and, and help them address their issues, but we know we're sending them back to a dysfunctional house. Mm -hmm. And that's where the work needs to be done. And that's when I stood up and said, we need to support organizations in the community that are rebuilding families. Um, so. Um, right. And so Ron, that's a good place for me to ask you to tell you a little bit about the Spokane Fatherhood Initiative, because that's a, I think it's a really impressive um, organization that is trying to address that. We're a nonprofit founded on the principle that fatherlessness is the root cause of nearly all of society's problems. So if you look at the, the list of things that this organization is trying to address, domestic violence, uh, drug and alcohol abuse, suicide, uh, racial inequities, now we can, I believe, all of those things stem back to uh, households that have um, 
that are fatherless, that, that the, the role of men and dads in society has been so weakened in the last 50, 60 years, in my lifetime. Um, we're now reaping the consequences and, and the fruit of that. And, and the, the element that's a, <clears throat> at work there is that fathers bring a sense of security and strength. Mothers bring love and nurturing. And both sides are valuable. Both sides are necessary to kids growing up uh, strong and healthy. And, and now we, and so we, we build fathers, okay? We have fatherhood classes. Um, we have a 93% graduation rate. Uh, in our father classes, we have an excellent reputation with the courts uh, and with most social service agencies in the community. We, we see literally we see transformation um, in in these men when they go through our classes. They're, they're very comprehensive, 24 hours for the basic class, 24 hours for an advanced class. We've got a, a program men can get into after that for six months if they want. We don't charge anything. We're, we have wonderful supporters, largely in the Christian community. And uh, I, I appreciate your endorsement that we are doing amazing things. Well, I, I, I think you are. I've, I, I know I've referred one young man to, to you. I'm, I'm going to follow up and give him a little nudge to make sure that he, he follows up. Um, I think one of the uh, one of the things that's happening at the state level is that uh, Representative Mary Dye had uh, tried to, uh, she had introduced, but could not get a hearing for a bill to create a men's commission to address some of the statistics that are there. I mean, if we had any other demographic group that had had the kind of statistics where the suicide rate is up from, is up by 37%, um, we'd start looking at uh, at what else we needed to to do to address that. And I know you have some statistics that come from your work with the, the Fatherhood Initiative of some of the problems that we have in our in the men and boys in our community, and we really need to address those. Um, what are some of those statistics that the Fatherhood Initiative is really looking at? Well, and not just boys, but but children who grow up in a fatherless home are four times mm -hmm. uh, more likely to end up in poverty. Uh, girls are seven times more likely to become pregnant as teenagers. Uh, boys and girls both are more likely to have behavioral problems. Uh, boys especially are 20 times more likely to end up in prison. Um, if they grow up in a fatherless home, they're more likely to commit crime, drop out of high school, commit suicide. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's overwhelming. The statistics, uh, you know, the social scientists want to say that, uh, that correlation is not causation, but we, we have decades of this research now supporting uh, this data. And, and it's just common sense, too to know that you don't need to look very far to, to see when you see social problems, to be able to trace it back to, to fatherless homes. So um, one of the things I did say in, in uh, the meeting to the audience is where's the church? Mm -hmm. uh, the church is, is a perfect vehicle to help the community solve these problems, but I didn't see any pastors there. Uh, it was very lightly attended. Uh, and I, and, and in all honesty, I'm not sure this was promoted in the church community, the faith community at all. I think if it had been, we might have had some some participation. But um, <clears throat> there's an interesting theory uh, promoted by uh, a man named Eric Swanson, who's done a lot of work in community transformation. And he says societal transformation is what often follows authentic spiritual transformation in a community. It's what happens when the secular society begins caring about the needs of the community just as much as the church does. So if the church doesn't lead and demonstrate how much it cares for the community and invest in solving these problems, the secular society is not. Mm -hmm. it's, it would be an interesting issue to, to have, uh, to debate that. I, I happen to believe it. Um, and we can get in. I mean, there's a whole another element of good versus evil and, the, the spiritual forces that are at play in our community here. Um, but we, I, if, if the church, the, what is the purpose of the church? If it's not to help change our communities, not just individuals that would, they, you know, that go to their nice siloed, you know, places on Sunday morning. No, we need to turn those people around and send them back into the community and put them to work. Many come here and help us do that. So I do appreciate your work. I'm going to make sure that I tag this uh, this posting to some folks in the church circles. Uh, but meanwhile, I'd like to remind uh, remind anybody who's listening that uh, 
May 3rd, there's the last of these three town halls looking at uh, building safer neighborhoods by looking at the at how we how we bring the best out of people and provide people with better uh, skills and resources uh, and acknowledge some of the problems that we've created. So that's that's going to be this Wednesday, May 3rd from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Northeast Community Center in Hilliard. And uh, are you going to be there, Ron? I'm going to try. I have a, a meeting here at 6.30, so we'll see. That'll make, that'll make um, it. Well, you you went to I'm one of the other ones, one, so one now. Have, yeah, yeah. It's, it's and, I, else and I've already connected with the, the organizers. We're having follow-up okay. meetings in my office tomorrow. So. Okay, great. Well, there's, there's a start. But uh, for anyone else who's interested in getting involved, this is really just the initial steps of a longer process uh, that I think we'll see unfolding over this next year. Uh, but this town hall, May 3rd, 5 to 7 at the Northeast Community Center in Hilliard. Uh, if you are interested in building safer neighborhoods by uh, by looking at the human factor, which is which always so critical, um, your uh, your opportunity for some input and to listen and to start to get involved is, is this Wednesday. One more thing. if A lot of this data that we're talking about is posted on our website, spofi.org, S-P-O-F-I dot O-R-G. And uh, we, we just recently revamped that. We got a lot of great information on there. I will put a link to your website onto, you. on my post and kick that out there. All right. And uh, thank you for joining me this morning, Ron. Thank you for having me.